Welcome to the Abhijit Sarkar GIS channel, where we explore the fascinating world of geographic information systems. My name is Abhijit Sarkar and I am a GIS professional with years of experience in the field. Through this channel, I want to share my knowledge and expertise with you to help you learn more about GIS and how it can be applied in various industries. Whether you are a student, a professional, or just someone curious about GIS, this channel is for you. I will be covering a wide range of topics, from basic GIS concepts to advanced techniques. We will also explore how GIS is used in different industries, such as environmental management, urban planning, transportation, and many others. So, if you want to learn more about GIS and how it can be applied in real-world scenarios, then make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. Welcome to this tutorial on how to use Google Earth Engine to visualize the Sentinel 5P offline nitrogen dioxide data and get the time series of nitrogen dioxide column number density in a specific area of interest. First, let's open the Google Earth Engine platform and search for the Sentinel 5P offline nitrogen dioxide data. We can use the Sentinel 5P L3 offline nitrogen dioxide dataset for this tutorial. Once we have selected the dataset, we can navigate to the code editor and start writing our code. In this example, we want to visualize the distribution of nitrogen dioxide pollutants in the West Bengal area of interest, so we need to import the West Bengal shapefile into our code. We can import the shapefile using the e.featureCollection function and then clip the nitrogen dioxide data to the West Bengal boundary using the e.image.clip function. Now that we have clipped the data, we can visualize the nitrogen dioxide distribution using the e.image.visualize function and set the visualization parameters. We can set the visualization parameters such as the color palette, the minimum and maximum values, and the opacity. Once we have set the parameters, we can add the nitrogen dioxide layer to the map using the map.add layer function. Now we can see the distribution of nitrogen dioxide pollutants in the West Bengal area of interest. But what if we want to get the time series of nitrogen dioxide column number density in this area? We can set up a time series analysis by first defining a function that calculates the mean nitrogen dioxide value for each image in the dataset within our area of interest. We can then apply this function to the dataset using the e.imagecollection.map function and get the time series of nitrogen dioxide column number density in the West Bengal area of interest. Finally, we can plot the time series on a chart using the ui.chart.image.series function and visualize the trends in nitrogen dioxide pollution over time. And there you have it. With just a few lines of code, we were able to visualize the distribution of nitrogen dioxide pollutants in the West Bengal area of interest and get the time series of nitrogen dioxide column number density. Google Earth Engine provides a powerful platform for visualizing and analyzing geospatial data, making it an essential tool for GIS professionals scientists, and researchers around the world. With the ability to access vast amounts of satellite imagery data, Google Earth Engine allows us to gain insights into the Earth's environment, climate, and natural resources, and to monitor changes over time. Whether you are working in environmental management, urban planning, agriculture, or any other industry that requires geospatial data analysis, 
Google Earth Engine can help you decisions. By learning how to use Google Earth Engine, you can take advantage of the many features and tools it offers and create impactful visualizations and analyses that can drive positive change in your field. So, don't hesitate to explore Google Earth Engine further and check out the many tutorials, resources, and community forums available to help you on your journey. Thank you for watching and I hope this tutorial has been useful in showcasing the capabilities of Google Earth Engine. If you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe to our channel Abhijit Sarkar GIS for more tutorials on GIS, remote sensing and geospatial data analysis. Also, Feel free to leave any comments or questions in the section below and we will be happy to respond. Thank you again and we will see you in the next video.